Hey, it's Bruce with Weeders Digest and WeedersDigest.com. If you've watched any of our videos, I believe I've got somewhere around 400 YouTube videos out there. Today, I'm going to show you my personal tips on how you can get rid of geese on your shoreline. Now, this is, I'm actually on my own deck uh, on the lake. You might even hear a bunch of birds. You might even hear geese today. I'm going to talk to you about how you can manage the geese on your shoreline. I'm going to talk to you about free things. I'm going to talk to you about some expensive things. I'm going to tell you about some really good ideas that don't work. And how do I know? Because I've tried them all. And most importantly, uh, I've got a couple friends of mine here as well. And together, we're going to show you some ideas. And everything will work for a short period of time. Some of them really short. Some of them are long lasting. So what I want to do is show you, well, let's, let's start with, and, and again, I said some are expensive, some are not. This is our goose beacon. And it looks a little crazy, but what it does is it flashes during the night, not big time, not like a strobe, but it's out there floating like this. And I'm going to teach you a few things about geese when we're talking here too, that geese, uh, they need a place that they can rest at night. And they typically do not rest on the shore. And the reason is because they're afraid of predators. So with this sitting out there and just moving just a little bit like this, at their eye level, it causes them to lose sleep. And so if you put this into a pond where they are sleeping, where are they're, they're spending their evening, just this little bit of movement and the light flashing causes them to lose about two or three nights of sleep. But after two or three nights of sleep, they, they're tired. They're going to go someplace else. This comes with a 90-day money-back guarantee. So pretty tough to beat that. Um, of course, everything that I'm going to be talking about, you can always call us at Weeders Digest. Um, this is one. Uh, oh, let me go back to that one. So the key to that one is it has to be where they're going to spend time at night. So when we talk to somebody on the phone, if they tell us that uh, they come passing through every day, during the day only and they're not there at night, then that item that I just showed you, our goose beacon, will not work. People like to hang, you know, lots of little things around their dock, on their boat lift, along their shoreline. These do work. Uh, everything I've got here that I'm showing you just came from the lake. I just pulled it out. Um, this one's all slimy because it was now and actually right at the water's level. Um, and it'll keep them away for a while, but they'll get used to it. Now, on Lake Minnetonka, near us, not too far away, beautiful neighborhood, um, like a homeowners association. They've got, I'd say they have a thousand feet of shoreline. They didn't want to go spend the money on this. They went out and they bought, um, they put string with stakes. I actually have that down on my shoreline. I just have kite string, the cheapest string I can get, and I, I've got 750 feet of shore out in front of us, and I put it right along the, the shoreline at neck level of the geese, not mine. Uh, I put it at neck level of the geese, and it, it they just don't like anything coming near their neck. So they will come up to it, they'll see that string, and it'll deter them for a while. In my case, they eventually decide that they're going to fly in and land over the, the string, and so it only lasts a period of time, but it's still a great idea. But back to the folks on Minnetonka, what they did was rather than buying something like this that represents an eye, uh, uh, an eye of what, I don't know, but it represents an eye, so they went out and they bought um, a big stack. Well, like I said, it's a thousand feet, so they bought a very big stack of CDs, um, CDs or DVDs, and they put them on that string, and so they just have, I mean, you can you can drive by it, and when I drive by that bay, I would say that I can see them from hundreds of yards away. I can just see a bunch of CDs. So anyway, that's a, a near free, nearly free idea. Um, okay, so this year what I decided to do um, was to chase the geese, and now I'm going to say that in my opinion, everything that I'm going to share with you today are humane ideas. If they weren't humane, um, I wouldn't share them on the video. But these are things that have worked for me. So this year, I bought a, uh, I think I paid about 40 bucks for this drone. Um, I've crashed it a lot of times, but I've learned how to fly this. And with this drone, I can chase the geese off my shoreline. Not, um, I don't think, I suppose I'm harassing them, but at least I'm trying to show them, go someplace else. Um, so get, get this, I started chasing them when there was ice. And... I could stand on my deck, I could fly it right down, go down to the water, down to the ice, chase them around. Then the ice went away, so I wasn't a good enough drone pilot yet, I'm getting there, but I wasn't a good enough drone pilot to fly this over the water without it ended up crash. So I ended up coming up with another plan. Again, this was about a $30 item. 
<laughs> so once I chased him into the water, I know it sounds like I'm getting a little crazy, but chances are if you have geese, you've either thought of all these things or you've chosen to spend either more money or have considered uh, heavy ammunition or something. So I feel like I'm coming up with some better solutions. Yeah, I went and bought a toy boat remote control and so I put it down there on my shoreline and I again I don't think I'm harassing them I chased the geese away from my shoreline so um, that was this year's addition was that um, okay so the owl um, the owl is well it's kind of like it's kind of like this guy I believe it works I think this works but it's only a limited time that it's going to have the effect Eventually they realize uh, this owl is not going to do anything. Um, last year, um, Weeder's Digest, we actually sold one where the head would spin. Uh, just kind of in the wind, it would bobble and the head would, would go like that. More money for you, less results, and eventually the geese, you know, they figure it out. But, it, you know, this also works for seagulls and things like that. So, in my opinion, I think you can do a bunch of these things and just kind of switch them up um, to get the results you're after. So that's another thing. Uh, last year's best success was this little guy. And I shared this with a bunch of other neighbors on our lake and, and other people's lakes. And this, you know, hanging um, down on my shoreline, I've got a patio set out on the dock that has an umbrella. And so I just hung this above the, uh, you know, from the umbrella. And, you know, in the wind, um, just this guy out there, you know, moving around, stuff like that. Uh, really a good idea. So, you know, I think, I think this is one of those that lasted longer than some of these other options. Um, another favorite at Reader's Digest that I've been selling for many, many years um, is our goose. And oh, this is actually kind of takes care of everything. So you plug your garden hose into this. And right from here is infrared uh, detector. So when anything moves into it, um, whether that's uh, a goose, uh, a deer, raccoon, so again, it's great for the garden, then this is just like your normal um, pulsating sprinkler. So, you know, it just goes like that. And it'll scare most anything away, as well as the kids next door. Works great. You just don't want to have it, um, you, you need water, uh, supplied to it at all times so you want to make sure you've got a hose that's not going to leak on you um, and so again this um, is a great tool that we've been selling at Weeders Digest for probably 10 years sold them all around the world and you can set the um, the uh, the range as far as how much that infrared is going to catch but it just sits there quietly and all of a sudden a goose comes up there and it just you know it just takes one it goes across and then it goes back to its other position and shuts down. So, um, relatively, relatively inexpensive. Um, and then you know we've got a few other. Here's a, here's another. Um, some of these are just kind of my own ideas. Um, actually, let me tell you a couple other things. So, as far as goose manage, you could management, you can do. Uh, you could call me, but um, I, I you probably there's. Some, some bird is not happy about the fact that I'm talking about getting rid of birds, but uh, very few people would be disappointed in getting rid of geese. And if you're not in an area with geese, maybe you don't even understand why we would chase uh, what could be a beautiful bird away, but they are, uh, I got stories for you, but I won't, I won't share them right here right now. But there are ways to manage geese um, at once they do nest. And so my whole goal, my, my main goal of what we're trying to do here is keep the geese from nesting on my shoreline. Um, that's why I don't want them to get there. So I've, this year I've successfully kept the geese away so they have not nested. But if a nest did get on the, on the um, oh, you know what, hold the camera, hold right there, hold on, I'm gonna run over here. Um, I just thought of this, all right. This, uh, this is a goose egg. <laughs> this was not part of the script, but I just realized I do have a goose egg over there. And this I actually found in about two feet of water uh, when the ice went away. And I don't know if uh, the mother goose got scared and laid an egg, got scared enough to lay an egg in the water, but it was in about two feet of water when there was still the majority of the ice was out there. This was just a couple weeks ago. 
Um, or did she lay the egg on the ice and then the ice went out and this fell to the bottom? So, um, you know, that's a, that's a view of, a, of an egg, but they're pretty good size. Had not thought about that until I was sitting over there. You're probably wondering why I would have it on my deck, but um, did it for a little bit of research. One of the things that, um, boy, I, I have so many stories that I could tell, but one of the ways that you can manage um, a goose egg um, is that some people will go crush them. Um, that would be, in my opinion, inhumane. Um, other people will take, if they're, they're typically, when I've seen a nest, there are five to six eggs. Um, they will take all of the eggs except for one, and there's something about the mother's psyche there that um, it's not bad to her because she's still got to hatch one egg. Um, by the way, they always come back to wherever they go. So when we, we've, we've been living here uh, by the lake for 14 years, and so the same geese that laid the eggs would come back the next year. Well, if you have six eggs that hatch, that's the next year you're going to have six pairs that are going to come back if they all survive the winter. <sighs> so much to share with you. Um, here's another way that, that um, is recommended. I believe in the state of Missouri, maybe it's Iowa, maybe it's Ohio, I don't remember. They actually recommend to, to take the eggs and coat them with corn oil. And uh, corn oil will actually penetrate in and they will not hatch and when they don't hatch, the mother sits on them for a very long time, obviously. Um, and then, I, th I think it's a little sad, but uh, then she eventually gives up and is disappointed that, um, uh, that the eggs didn't hatch, and so she goes away. So that's called, you could, you could just Google that about egg oil, uh, goose egg oil. That's using a, uh, again, a corn oil. I don't know what I think about that exactly, but you can learn more about that. I, w I, I just thought of a story that probably about six years ago, um, if I was to pan, we won't pan this way, but we've got a peninsula that goes out, kind of looks like a golf course. And so I have neighbors that shoot golf balls at my peninsula out there. And out on the peninsula, um, there was golf balls laying around. There's a bunch of them in the water and whatnot. And so I had a fox that came and uh, showed up on my shoreline uh, and ate all the eggs. And I thought that I was doing mom, a uh, mother goose, a favor. So I went out there, felt bad for the mom, sort of. And I removed all the eggs, uh, uh, all the broken eggshells. And the next day, it's crazy, the next day, golf balls replaced all of those um, eggs that were there. So there were six eggs there. And I removed the, the broken shells, and the next day there were six golf balls, and she sat on the six golf balls for probably, I don't know, two or three weeks until she finally gave up because <laughs> the golf balls weren't hatching. Um, and I thought it was a neighbor or somebody pl playing a trick, even though nobody would have been able to find this nest. I did actually talk to some goose experts, and they proved out to me that that was probably true. Okay, so... Um, uh, here's another one. Okay, so, and I think this is a pretty good idea. So this is actually not just for me to drink, this is a prop. So when the geese are down by the water, that's fine. When the geese end up on my in my yard, they put goose poop everywhere, and that can happen. I mean, we used to have 20, 30 of them in the yard at a time years ago. They could create such a mess. Well, what are you going to do with that? You know, you, you can run down there and chase them, but they just keep coming back. And so what I started doing, uh, both my wife and I, we would just run out there, we would grab ice and throw it out there. Because what are you going to do? The other option is you start throwing rocks. Well, if, again, if you were trying to treat them humanely, you don't want to be throwing rocks and hitting them in the head. But if you are throwing ice, then, you know, throw a piece of ice. It's going to land in the yard. It's going to melt. And you're not going to be mowing rocks the next time. And if you want to get a little more aggressive with it, you know, um, you can use a wrist rocket. And again, try to keep this uh, humane. I'm just telling you, I can't take a oblong piece of ice and put it into a wrist rocket and get anywhere near a goose. I mean, it just it just doesn't happen. I'm not that good of an aim. And so um, if I go out there, grab some ice out of the freezer, shoot my wrist rocket in their general direction, I can usually chase them away to keep at least keep the goose poop off. Um, I think I am, oh, you know what? And I got one more, and for some reason, I had it on my shoreline uh, as recent as a couple days ago. It disappeared, but it's a big, uh, 
I believe it's, it's, it's like a really ornery looking coyote or something like that. It's plastic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it can actually kind of move in the wind a little bit. It's got what looks like a real tail on it. That one looks really cool. You could go find it. Um, you could find that one on Amazon as a matter of fact. But I'm telling you, I put it out there and um, within 20 minutes, all the geese were literally uh, just laying around, I was going to say sleeping, but they were just sitting all around that fox or that uh, whatever that uh, uh, wolf type of thing was. So I don't know why that didn't work, but um, I like to use, you know, all of these things. I like to just kind of mix it up and, you know, and as a result of that, I feel like I've, I have gained um, success, but I don't count on any one of them to really do the job for me. But uh, this has been a bit of a lengthy video, but if you have goose problems, like I did in the past, then um, you know that uh, you would do anything. And if, you, if it took enduring, enduring a 15 minute video of me rambling, all that would be well worth it just to get some um, uh, resolution to solve your issues. So again, uh, rambled through a bunch of things. I probably forgot more than I shared with you because I've been doing this for a long enough time and get enough questions online. So what I'd suggest you do, shoot me a message at bruce at weedersdigest.com. Go to our website at weedersdigest.com. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch some of our 400 videos and uh, make it a great summer, goose-free, weed-free. Give us a call at theweedersdigest.com.